we are telling all enemies of your life is going to rain. Transformation will rain. Sinners will be born again. Their lives will change. Tonight, backsliders will be restored. Tonight, the sick will be healed. Tonight, God is going to perform creative miracles and all other forms of miracle. Here right now, I declare to you the prophets and the apostles of our time. Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui, as he stormed the whole world with this crusade. You are welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. It's going to rain for me, for you, for everyone in Jesus' name. Here at River State, I welcome you. All the states of Nigeria, I welcome everyone. And then all the nations of Africa, Europe, Americas, Asia, everywhere, I welcome you to a spectacular time in Jesus' name. It's like we're riding bicycles and then we got to the first place. Now we change, we moved on to a motorcycle. And then we ran faster. And now we got a car. Then we got a boat. Now we've got aeroplane. I will fly into these showers of blessing. Everyone, everywhere, showers upon your life in Jesus' name. There will be salvation. There will be healing. There will be deliverances. There will be miracles. The spectacular will take place in your life in Jesus' name. Candidate for miracle, where are you? Father, in Jesus' name, we well, thank you at this time and bless your name. We know you prepared showers of blessings for everyone and anyone here as we come. We pray nobody will go back empty and dead in Jesus' name. Individuals, families, churches, everywhere, all nations, online, physical, showers upon everyone. Confirm your power and your miracle in every life. We thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. We will see, we will hear, we will experience. Nobody will be left behind. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. That sentence you have been hearing many times, many years, there shall be showers of blessing. Did you know it is from the Bible? It's a promise of God. It's a prophetic word the Lord has preserved for us. It's in Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26. And I will make them, and the places round about my hill, a blessing. I thought you would say amen. And I will cause the shower to come down in its season. There shall be showers of blessing. That's the promise of God. He said, I will. And when God says he will do something, it will be done. And when he makes a promise like that, it's a promise for every hour. A promise for every place. A promise for every person. And it's a promise in particular for you. There shall be showers of a blessing. Now, as you join that with Hebrews chapter 13, 
reading from verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. That is, when the Lord said, there shall be showers of blessing. The people were waiting. They were waiting for the Messiah. They were waiting for the Savior. They were waiting for the Redeemer. There shall be. And when Christ came, then the showers began to fall. And miracles began to happen in unprecedented manners. And the people that had understanding, they woke up. Here is what God said. There shall be showers of blessing. There shall be at that time of Ezekiel. It was future. I will. I will make the clouds. I will send the rain. I will do wonders among the people. And now, even though it was future at that time, Christ came. And when Christ came, and then he began to move in all the towns and villages and communities and to everyone in the land. Then the reality and the fulfillment of those showers began to be fulfilled in their midst. And every day, anyone meeting Christ, as we are meeting Christ tonight, any time Christ gave an invitation, as he's giving invitation to you tonight, any time Christ touched anyone, as he's touching you tonight, the showers began to fall on them from heaven. And now Christ has gone to heaven. And it's over there. And it's now pouring the blessings down and the showers down on everyone. It's still the same. Tonight, I'm talking to you on showers of blessing from the unchangeable Christ. Unchangeable Christ, the Savior. Unchangeable Christ, the miracle worker. Unchangeable Christ, the healer. Unchangeable Christ, the deliverer, and is coming from him. Now, we're going to do something very simple for you to remember and for you to know what the Lord is going to do in your life. That word showers, showers of blessing, showers, S is for salvation. Tonight, salvation is coming your way. H is for healing. And tonight, as the rains begin to fall, and no power can send that rain back to the sky. S for salvation. H for healing. You are healed. Whatever the sickness, whatever the infirmity, healing is coming your way. I receive. O is obtainment. When something is given to you, and you are not just looking at it, you stretch your hand, you grab that thing, you receive that thing, you obtain. And what you obtain is what you receive. What you receive is what you experience. And that thing you receive, that thing you obtain, that thing that becomes yours, it will be seen in your life. Tonight, I will get something. Tonight, I will obtain something. It's the part of the showers that is your personal possession. W is wonders. Somebody help me shout wonders there. Shout it as if you have it now. Wonders. Wonders will come your way. The wonder of salvation. The wonder of healing. The wonder of deliverance. The wonder of blind eyes being opened. And the wonders of the lame rising up and walking. And the wonder of impossibilities becoming possible in your life wonders 
I shout wonders. He is exaltation. Christ is exalted. And then he was exalted that wherever you are and whoever you are, he will lift you up. He will exalt you. You are in the dungeon, he'll dig you up from there. You are in the valley, he'll dig you up from there. It's part of the showers. The showers that come without an exaltation, then that shower will not be complete. But showers will be complete in your life tonight. Our is restoration. Restoration. Restoration from heaven. Restoration by heaven. Restoration to restore you to everything Adam and Eve lost. Everything that you have lost in your life. There is restoration tonight. Restoration and then S is supernatural supply. Supernatural supply. The showers, salvation, healing, obtainment, wonders, exaltation, restoration, supernatural supply. Those are the three points I bring to you tonight. We're going to go into the message now. Number one, and here are things coming your way. Here are things you are going to possess. And when we call and we say, you want this, you want this, where are you? Immediately you respond so that heaven will know that this is what you are looking for. You will get something tonight. Yes, salvation for all accused men. Salvation for all accused men. Look at Romans chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 9. Romans chapter 3, verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? Are we Jews better than the Gentiles? Are we men better than the women? Are we parents better than the children? Are we wives better than the blacks? Are we colored people better than the wise? Are we better? In any nation, there are people who are making comparison that this is better than that. As we consider individuals, it's asking us the question, are you better than the other one? Other people are devils and you are the angel. Other people are sinners and you are the saints. No, in no wise, you are not better than your neighbor. You are not better than the other one. For we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. Proved that they are all under sin. That's why it says, look at verse 23 there. In verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All, all. That he is, the Jew is not better than the Gentile. All have seen the church goer is not better than those who don't go to church. All have seen that the young is not better than the adult. All have seen that everyone, everyone, we carry the badge of Adam with us, the nature of Adam with us. For all have seen and come short of the glory of God. What's the solution then? Salvation for all accused men. That salvation is coming to you today. Once you accept, you are a sinner. You accept, you have seen. You, have, you accept, you are not better than other people. The same bondage of sin that paralyzes other people. The same bondage of sin makes you incapable, unable to live right and to be righteous in the sight of the Lord. Once you accept that, then the free offer of the salvation of God will come to you tonight. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, be justified freely. You cannot pay for salvation. You cannot cry and shed tears that will fill the bottle that will qualify you for salvation. You cannot roll on the ground 
a long time enough to qualify you for salvation. You cannot pay money to qualify you for salvation. Be justified freely by his grace. That grace is here tonight. That grace will save you tonight. The moment you stretch out your hand of faith and you say, Lord, here am I. I cannot pay for salvation. Here am I. My good words cannot mount up to the point I will have salvation. Here am I. All the good deeds I've done, all the church going I've done, cannot merit salvation. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Redemption in Christ. Salvation in Christ. Forgiveness in Christ. Justification in Christ. As you come to Christ tonight, you are connected with salvation. I said, as you come to Christ tonight, you are connected with salvation. That's the reason why I normally give a call, an invitation, and I say, you are there. You want the salvation of the Lord? It's coming from heaven. It's part of the showers. Where are you? Raise up your hand. And you raise up your hand. And if whatever I tell you come out or whatever, you do that, that salvation will come to you. What am I saying? What I'm saying is this. The rain is falling. The showers are coming. You must come out and bring your bucket out. And then you will fill your cup fill your drum and fill your bucket to overflow in in Jesus name but if the rain is falling if the showers are coming down and then you lock yourself in the house and you put your bucket upside down and while the rain is falling and everybody is satisfied you are there and you don't come out you will not be part of the beneficiaries of the shower. But as the rain is falling and you bring out your heart and you bring out your personality and you say, yes, Lord, the rain is falling for everyone. I will be a partaker. Salvation will come to you. Your heart might have accused you. The neighbors might have accused you. And everyone around, even the devil, might have accused you as if you are the greatest sinner in the world. This salvation is for all accused men. That salvation will come to you. Christ is inviting you. The Savior is inviting you. And as you respond, as the beginning of the showers, salvation for all accused men is yours. It's mine. I said it's mine. You will get saved in Jesus' name. The next is age. And that age in the showers coming from above, that age is healing. Healing through his accepted message. Healing through his accepted message. You heard about a doctor. You have a challenge. Somebody told you about that doctor. It was okay, I hear, but you never responded. You never took action. The medicine will not just come and jump on you. And the injection will not just penetrate you. While you are there, you will come. You will understand. If you believe the message you are told about the healer, you will take action. Now, Jesus Christ is our healer. Jesus Christ is the doctor of all doctors. Internally, he will heal you. Externally, he will heal you. Your blind eyes, it will open. Your lame legs will rise up and walk. Whatever is wrong in your life tonight, he'll perform that operation right there. Healing. Somebody shout, healing. Healing through his accepted message. 
We're looking at Isaiah chapter 53. And I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1 was believed our report. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The people who believe the message were report that Christ heals. He heals blind eyes. He heals madness. He delivers from all the torments and the attacks of Satan. He takes tumor away. He takes a near away. He's able to open even the deaf ears and the tight tongue he will lose. And then if there's anything that is no more functioning, no more working in your life tonight, he'll make that part of the body to work. If you are not hearing, you will hear and will say Christ is the healer of every sickness as you accept. That's why the prophet is asking the question, was believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, surely he has borne our griefs. He's taking it away already. That's what you need to know. That all your griefs, all your suffering, all your infirmity, all the problems you have, everything is laid on Christ. Is that all the amen you have? And he has carried our sorrows, all our sorrows, is taking everything away. Yet we did him, we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Look at verse 5. It says, But he was wounded for our transgression. It's a substitute. All the transgression, all the sin, all the evil that we had in before, he suffered on the cross of Calvary to take everything away. And then it says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes were healed. When you make that personal and you know with his stripes and the weeping post, I am healed and you believe it in the bottom of your heart. And you know that even today, whatever the sickness, it's impossible with man. It is not impossible with God. With God, all things are possible. Your case, possible. Your healing, possible. Your deliverance, possible. Your miracle, possible. Look at Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 16. It says in verse 16, when the evening was come, he brought unto him this Messiah, he brought unto him the Savior, he brought unto him this the healer, he brought unto him this deliverer, he brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the devils, the spirits, with his word and healed all that were sick. Healed all that were sick. How many people will he heal tonight? He healed all. He has not changed Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He healed all that were sick. Why? Look at verse 17. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah the prophet. The prophets only said, only spoke what he got from heaven. There's no lie in heaven. There's no deception in heaven. And there is uh, no politics hanky-panky in heaven. And the heavens always revealed the truth to the prophets. And the prophet Isaiah received that truth and that revelation that himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. He will take your infirmity, your sickness, and that pain, he will take it away very easily. You'll not feel any pain I'll perform the miracle tonight in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 
in first peter chapter 2 verse 24 it says who is own self his own self his own self bear our sins in his own body his own cell in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed i am healed don't just say amen i am healed cancer will be healed tonight all the ulcer will be healed tonight and the brain problem will be healed tonight that thing that is swollen in your body will be healed tonight that thing that causes pain in your life tonight you are healed in jesus name s for salvation h for healing and now we have o the obtainment of abundant mercy obtainment of abundant mercy why do we need mercy because we face judgment because we've done things that will land us in prison that prison is not only 10 years 70 years 100 years that prison is going to be everlasting and it's only it's not only prison with hard labor it's prison with suffering unbearable pain and now we're saying what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How can I be relieved from the pain of the evil that I have done? There's only one way. Mercy. The mercy of God. Obtainment of abundant mercy. Look at First Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. It says, who was before a blasphemer? and a persecutor and injurious but i obtained mercy i couldn't come to god with marriage i couldn't tell god oh god look at me i'm good i'm nice i'm pure i'm righteous because of that show me mercy say no since you say you merit it already you cannot marriage mercy. It's when you don't have a marriage and you say nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Rock of ages, clear for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from the wounded side of blood be of sin, the double kill. That's when the mercy will come to you. I see somebody here. Mercy is coming your way. And the mercy of God that forgives you is the mercy of God that cancels all the punishment you should have had. And now as you come and you say, Lord, I don't merit it. You don't merit salvation. I don't merit it. You don't merit forgiveness. I don't merit it. You don't merit a place in heaven. I don't merit it. I don't merit justification and joy for life and for eternity. And what I do not have by marriage, I'm going to have by mercy. That's the shower of attainment of abundant mercy. It says, I was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and the grace of our Lord, the grace of our Lord, the grace of our Lord in the world. There's no grace. You see, I'm looking for work. You see, 
what's your qualification? What's your certificate? I don't have certificate. Give me the job by grace. They say it doesn't happen like that. You go to the bank and you want money, and uh, you tell the uh, cashier there, "I need some money. How much do you need? I need, uh, you know, these thousands." And they say, "Do you have an account here?" No, I don't have an account. Give me the money by grace. They say it doesn't work like that. You go to the market and you're looking for food, and you say, "I need some food." here they say yes everything is available where is uh, you know the price are you able to pay the price uh -uh. i want to get everything in the market by grace the world does not work like that only god works by grace and what we do not have uh, and we want to have is only god that can provide it for us by grace and then it says and the grace of our lord would exceeding abundance with faith and love which is in christ jesus tonight every blessing of heaven you need what you cannot get from the world because the world does not operate by grace but everyone operates by grace what you need tonight you'll have it by grace in jesus name look at verse 15 in verse 15 it says this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation worthy for all to accept when you accept the grace of God, like everybody else accepts the grace of God, what he gets by grace, you will get by grace, she will get by grace, everyone will have showers of miracles tonight by grace in Jesus' name. It says this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners to save sinners to save who tell me tell me you know some people i can't get saved tonight i say why i want to turn over a new leaf become a better person before i can be saved then it's not saving sinners you have already you know saved yourself cleanse yourself you're already righteous it's not saving the self-righteous it's saving uh, sinners other people say i want to i want to do something and i want to uh, discipline myself and live a very righteous life so that when i come to christ i'll say christ look at what i've done i've made myself righteous he didn't come to save the righteous he came to save us sinners as you are there tonight and you feel the guilt of your sin and the power of your sin and your helplessness in your sin you are a candidate for salvation it will save you it will forgive you it will transfer your name from the dungeon of darkness and bring your name to life and light in jesus name here is a faithful saying and worthy of all to accept that jesus christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. What does that mean? Saul, who became Paul, said, I was bad, very bad, as badness could be. I was injurious, as any violent man could ever be. I was a blasphemer. I was terrible. I was the chief the highest, the greatest, the most wicked of all sinners, if God can save me, he was saying, the chief of sinners, then all the other people that kill behind me, the Lord will save them. He will save you tonight. He will change your life tonight. If he could save Saul and he became Paul, there is hope for you. Tonight is the night of your salvation. I don't have to do any other thing. Christ is Savior. He came into the world to save sinners. 
Look at verse 16. It says in verse 16, I'll be it for this cause. I obtained mercy. Remember, you are not coming. I paid much money to the church. Uh -uh. I obtained mercy. I did good. I sent somebody to school. I gave clothes to the naked. I gave water to the, to the thirsty. That's not why you're saved. It says, I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern. What he did for me is a pattern. What he did for me is a model. What he did for me is an example for a pattern to them which you hereafter believe on him. As you believe on him tonight, eternal life will come to you. The believer on him to life everlasting. S, salvation. H, healing. O, obtainment of abundant mercy. W, what's W? I said, what's your own W there? What are you going to have tonight? Wonders. Enemies will look at you and wonder. The sickness that had been there, and that sickness is going away, he will look back and look at you. No more sickness, no more infirmity, and wonder. The evil spirit that possessed your life before, that evil spirit will come out. And as that evil spirit is coming out, he looked back like that. He said, forever, forever, I cannot get into him. I cannot get into her anymore. They will wonder. And you, you have been on crutches before for how many years now? And today, the Lord will work wonders in your life. And those crutches will vanish away in Jesus' name. And then, as you go back home, and you stand up straight, and you are walking straight, and you even run, you'll find people will say, is that him? Is that her? They say, no. It's like his twin brother, twin sister. You say, yes, it is me. What happened to you? What happened to you? You got eight wonders in your life in Jesus' name. W now is wonders of all round miracles. You turn this side, miracle. You move on here, miracle. You turn the other side, miracle. Anywhere you are in the arena, anywhere you are far away there, as we pray and mention the name of Jesus, wonders will come to you in Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 2. We're reading from verse 22. Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. A man approved of God among us tonight, Lord Jesus Christ, there will be miracles. <clears throat> there will be miracles. There will be wonders. There will be signs in Jesus' name, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. We have already heard some testimonies and those testimonies and many more will be multiplied in your life look at verse 43 there verse 43 it tells us in verse 43 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders how many wonders many wonders i said what kind of wonders many wonders for the young for the old, for the educated, for the normal people, for the boys, for the girls, many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Christ did the wonders, and then he transferred the power to his own disciples, 
and everywhere they met wonders took place and everywhere as we're meeting together and we meet in the name of jesus wonders that corner wonders in front of me here wonders far at the back when we mention the name of jesus there have been wonders on this other side wonders in your life wonders of all around miracles the next word there is e exaltation from abject misery Exalt, exaltation from uh, abject misery let's look at first samuel chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 8 for samuel chapter 2 we're reading from verse 8 see what the lord will do for you tonight i said see what the lord will do for you tonight are you the one i'm talking about remember anywhere you are any country you are and you're online here is miracle waiting for you exaltation from abject misery in first samuel chapter 2 verse 8 he raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunk hill to search them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are the lords and he has set the world upon them he has power he has wisdom he has ability to set the whole globe on invisible pillars and the globe is rotating and yet nothing is shifting the god who has the power and the wisdom and he has the ability to set the whole world upon those invisible pillars that same god will lift you up today out of the dungeon he'll lift you up out of your poverty he'll lift you up out of your suffering he lift you up out of your imprisonment it will lift you up if you have been lying down there and cockroaches are walking over you and reptiles are walking over you and all those uh, you know messengers of the devil they trample over you you are coming out of that situation exaltation from abject misery and now we have our our is restoration somebody help me shout restoration restoration to our almighty maker the lord will restore you your soul your spirit your life every part of you restoration tonight and every good thing you have lost in life restoration tonight you are restored to the almighty maker the one who created you and he says i know the plan i have for you i know the good thing i have for you and that good thing that has eluded you that has escaped you for a long time you are going to be restored to the blessings of god look at joel chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 12 Joel chapter 2 verse 12 therefore also now says the Lord turn ye even to me with all your heart with fasting and weeping and with mourning turn unto me he's saying look at the direction you have been going and you have lost valuable things in life you have lost your way and you've lost your inheritance you've lost the good things you should have had because of your own evil doing he says but restoration can come tonight turning around can come tonight if you will turn unto me with all your heart you don't distribute yourself your heart a part to satan a patch to the world, 
a path to religion, a path to tradition, but you gather up everything in your life, your whole heart, then you say, I come with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind, and I return unto the Lord without any mind of going back to the devil, or going back to the world, or going back to your sin. It says, turn ye, even to me, with all your heart. And then it says, in verse 13, in verse 13, it says, rent your heart, and not your garments. Turn, look at that again, turn, see that, turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. He's low to anger, and is of great kindness, and repentance turns around from the evil, from the judgment he would have given you. Look at verse 25, in verse 25, and I will restore to you all the years that the locusts have eaten. He says, I will restore all the joy you have lost, all the health you have lost, all the goodness in life you have lost, all your family that you have lost, everything you have lost, it will restore, restore unto you. And the food and the things you ought to have to keep soul and body together, it will restore everything unto you. And he said, I will. He said, this one is unstoppable. This blessing come upon your life it is unstoppable. I will restore to you not only the days and the weeks or the months, all the years that the locust has eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Look at verse 26. It says in verse 26, after he said, I will restore. And he will restore. Unto me. Unto me. He will restore in Jesus' name. He's willing to do it. That's why he gave the promise. He loves to do that. That's why he gave the promise. And he's ready at this time to bring the restoration in your life. That's why he gave the promise and he said, I, the God of heaven, I, that Satan cannot stop, I, that for everyone, we're talking about the impartial God, we're talking about the incorruptible God, we're talking about a God that when he makes a promise, he will fulfill that promise in your life. And tonight, somebody help me shout, tonight, that's the night of restoration in your life. And it says, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. 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 And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. It will deal wondrously with you. Whosoever, whosoever will come to the Lord tonight, and say, Lord, I am a beneficiary. I am a partaker of the showers of blessing. And I need full restoration and total restoration in my life. And my people shall never be ashamed. Are you there? My people shall never be ashamed. Are you part of those people? My people shall never be be ashamed. Amen. Look at verse 32. Verse 32 there tells us, and it shall come to pass that whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whosoever, that corner, Whosoever, that place, whosoever, that outside congregation there, whosoever, that person online, as you call on the Lord tonight, deliverance will come. Restoration will come. Salvation will come. 
the mercy of God will come a total transformation will come in your life in Jesus name now S S is the supernatural supply 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 it will flow into your life all the needs of your life spiritual physical all the needs of your life emotional all the needs of your life everything you've been crying about tonight is the night of fulfillment the lord will do it in your life in jesus name supernatural supply from the acknowledged messiah he is the messiah that means he is the christ he is all in all for you for me and for everyone in john chapter 4 verse 25 john chapter 4 verse 25 the woman saith unto him i know that messiah's cometh I know that Messiah's coming. The Messiah was standing in front of her. But she didn't recognize many people like that. The Messiah, the Savior, the healer, the helper, the deliverer is standing right in front of them. And they can't tell. And they, and they say, I know the Savior is coming. He's here. The healer is coming, is here. The helper is coming, is here. It is tonight. Your salvation, I said it's tonight. Your healing, I said it's tonight. Your redemption, I said it's tonight. Don't look any other place. Don't look for any other day. He is right here. The woman did not know that. The woman says unto him, I know that Messiah's cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, when he is come, you know, there's some people, they don't know salvation, salvation, Savior is here already. They say, well, we'll get it when we cross over to the other side. They say, nobody can know that he's saved now. Nobody can know that he's healed now. Nobody can know that he's delivered now. But at a future time, when we cross the gate of death and we pass on to the other side, then we will know that we are saved. My friend, it's right here. Salvation is right here. Deliverance is right here. Miracle is right here. She said, when he is come, he will tell us all things. When he is come, he will save us from all our sins. When he is come, he will heal us from all our sicknesses. When he is come, he will perform wonders in every life. Verse 26, in verse 26, Jesus said unto her, I, that speak unto thee, I am he. He has come. He is here. I, that speak unto thee, am the Savior. I am the healer. I am the deliverer. He's there, right there. And as you grieve yourself and offer yourself to him, and now salvation has come. Healing has come. But you know, the showers are going to begin to fall now. I said the showers are going to begin to fall now. Salvation will be given to you right now. Healing will be yours right now. You'll obtain the mercy of God right here tonight in Jesus' name. And then wonder. Can you, can you think about that? That you, you in particular, not another person, you in particular, wonders coming upon your life today. And then, it will exalt you. 
He'll take you out of that veil and valley of crying, of sorrow. He'll bring you to the mountain top of the joy of the Lord in Jesus' name. Restoration. Redemption. Total restoration in your life tonight in Jesus' name. And uh, supernatural what? Supernatural what? My God shall supply all your needs in Christ by Christ Jesus even tonight. Are you ready? Heaven is ready. Are you ready? God is ready. Are you ready? Your salvation is here available. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Salvation is here now. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All, all have sinned, all have sinned. But anyone that wants the guilt taken away, the power of sin broken in their lives, this is the time, the hour of your salvation. Anywhere you are, as it's about, and eyes are closed, just raise up your hand and say, I accept that tonight. The worst of sinners and having salvation, I accept that tonight. The most terrible of sinners, the Lord says, He'll forgive me. I receive that tonight. Anywhere you are, raise up your hand, raise up your hand, wherever you are, salvation, forgiveness coming unto you, and the Lord will write your name in heaven as one of the people whose sins are totally forgiven. If you're raising up your hand, you will stand up. You will identify yourself. Salvation is mine. Salvation is mine. Over here in Port Harcourt, in all the other adjoining places, any hallway you are, any other place you are, you are standing up now. Salvation is mine. And it is free. It's by the mercy of God. And any city you are in Nigeria, in any state, in any nation, in uh, Africa and beyond Africa, and you are online and you say, I want that salvation now. Christ is there by your side. If the omnipresent one, he will forgive you. Raise up your hand and then remember, he says, turn unto me with all your heart. Turn to the Lord and say, Lord, I turn away from my sin. I turn away from idols. I turn away from tradition. I turn away from every other God. I turn away from every other religion. I turn to Christ, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Lord. And as you do that, say, I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that Jesus rose again on my behalf. And because of that, all my sins, without exception, every, everything is forgiven. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, immediately they call, that's when you will do it. Salvation has come to you now. Amen. I said salvation has come to you now. Amen. Keep up your hand and pray with you now. Father, what a loving God you are. Lord Jesus, what a ready Savior you are. We thank you because this salvation, this forgiveness, this new life, this regeneration is for everyone that calls upon you. These are called upon you. And those online and those everywhere where we are connected together now, they've called upon you for forgiveness, for freedom, for salvation, for regeneration. Lord, I pray, according to your promise, which cannot fail, save everyone now in Jesus' name. Forgive all their sins. 
write their names in the book of life in heaven. Let a new life, regenerated life, come upon everyone right now in Jesus' name. Restore your peace, your joy, your new life to everyone right now. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord has done it. He cannot fail.